So let us continue our review of linear algebra, and we're going to do it in the broader category of R modules. So let V be an R module, which means that V by itself is an abelian group, and that a ring R is acting upon V. Of course, if R is itself a field, that makes V into a vector space. And let W be a subset of V. We say that W is a submodule of V, uh, we, which we would denote that as W is less than or equal to V. Um, if it is itself an R module under the restriction of operations of addition and scalar multiplication. So first of all, W needs to be a subgroup of V with respect to addition, but then we also have to have the restriction with scalar multiplication gives us a module as well. So remember, when it comes to scalar multiplication, this is a function from R cross V into V. So we, when we restrict it, to be r cross w so the vectors no longer have to be from v but they have to be from w we need that the product is always in w as well and that gives us a sub module uh, this is analogous to the notion of a subgroup subgrouping that we've talked about before now in the special case that r is a field uh, then v would be a vector space and we would call w a subspace so given any any module V and any subset W, uh, W will be a submodule if and only if the following three conditions are satisfied. First, W contains the zero vector. Um, and particularly, you only need that it's not empty, but it'll necessarily contain the zero vector. It's closed under addition. So you take any vectors V and W inside of W. There's some V plus W is also in there. And it also needs to be closed under scalar multiplication. So you take any scalar, in the ring of scalars and you take any vector inside of the subset w r times v is inside there as well and so i'll leave it as an exercise uh, for the viewer to prove that these three conditions are equivalent to being a submodule. Um, it's the exact same proof one would use in linear algebra to show that a when a subset is a subspace or not. Let me give you a few examples of such things here. So consider the polynomial ring f adjoint x here. We're assuming f is a field, therefore f adjoint x is a vector space. And consider the subset of polynomials where we adjoin only x squared. That is to say that we only take even powers of x. Uh, and so the coefficient of any odd degree monomial is zero in that situation. This forms a subspace of the polynomial vector space f adjoint x. Clearly, um, f adjoint x squared contains the zero polynomial because the to be to belong to f adjoint x squared, your coefficient of odd powers has to be zero. Well, this one's coefficient is zero in front of everything indiscriminate. So yeah, the zero polynomial is in there. Why is the sum of two polynomials that come from f adjoint x squared also in f adjoint x squared well look at the look at the coefficients of the odd degree monomials uh, if you take something like x well the coefficient of one polynomial is zero the coefficient of the other is zero and zero plus zero is zero what about x cubed well the one has coefficient zero the other has coefficient zero so their sum is zero voila and this will happen for all of the odd monomials why is it closed under scalar multiplication well if you take a polynomial in f adjoint x squared and you times it by r, well, looking at the coefficient of odd monomials, you're going to get r times zero, which is still zero. So the coefficient of odd monomials is still zero. Um, and so we're going to get that f adjoint x squared is closed under scalar multiplication. This shows us that f adjoint x squared is a submodule of, or I should say a subspace, since these are vector spaces here, of f adjoint x. It's also an inf infinite dimensional vector space though. And this this uh, this strategy works for any natural number whatsoever. Um, if we take f adjoint x to the n, it will be a submodule of f adjoint x. And if you are curious, zero does belong to the natural numbers here. If you take f adjoint x zero right here, this is just f, which of course is a submodule of f adjoint x like so uh it's, it's a subspace because this is closed under scalar multiplication because it's just a bunch of scalars anyways so that, that's a that's a nice example to provide here so some other vocabulary that's relevant to when we talk about subspace uh some spaces and sub modules is the idea of linear combinations and generation uh suppose that we have a r module call it v and take some subset of v um, we're going to call it S prime right here, and it contains the vectors V1, V2, V3, up to Vn. And for this, for this definition here, assume that this set S prime is a finite subset. Then we can define linear combinations of the set 
SI to be sums of the following form. We're going to take the sum of things that look like AI times VI, where AI is a scalar from the ring. Um, VI, of course, is a vector from the set S prime right there. And we take arbitrary sums of this. So if you expand it, it looks something like this. Something times V1 plus something times V2 all the way up to something times Vn, add it all together. And so sums that have this form are called linear combinations of S prime. This is how we define it when S prime is a finite set. If S is instead an infinite set, then we say a linear combination um, of something in S is it comes about from some finite subset S prime and a linear combination in that situation as well. Uh, so another way of saying that is if you take a finite, so if you have this set S, which is which is infinite, if you take a finite number of vectors inside of S, that makes a finite set like this, and if it's a if it's a linear combination over S prime, then it's a linear combination over S. So you just if it's an infinite set, you just push it onto finite subsets and you, you get your linear combinations there. So take any subset of a R module, and that could be infinite or finite, doesn't matter. We can define the span of S, which is commonly denoted as span of S, or some people use angle brackets to suggest that it's some type of um, submodule generated by the generators S, analogous to what we see um, with ideals and with subgroups in group theory and such. And it's going to be the set of all linear combinations of things from S. So the span of S is then defined to be the collection of all things that look like these type of sums, A, V times V. We take a sum of all these different um, Vs, where V ranges over the elements of S prime, and S prime is some finite uh, subset of S here. The idea is we don't want to have an infinite sum. We're, we, won't, we don't want to do calculus. We're not doing infinite series or anything like that. Um, we're just trying to take finite sums. So when it comes together, when it comes to adding things from S, all but finitely many of the coefficients are going to be zero. Some finite amount could be non-zero. And that's what, when we put all those together, we get the span of that set S. And this is going to generate the smallest submodule of V that contains the set S itself. So if you take the collection of all uh, of all submodules that contain V uh, contain S inside of V, and you look at their intersections, uh, that's going to be the span of S. So it is the smallest submodule generated uh, by those. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Are spans even modules, submodules, right? Well, they contain the zero. Uh, they contain the zero vector because you could just put zero in front of everything. Zero times anything is zero. If you add a bunch of zeros together, you're going to get zero. So the zero vector is in there. What about uh, an arbitrary? What about sums of arbitrary linear combinations? If alpha and beta are two linear combinations in S, then there's some set we'll call it S prime for which the elements of the, in the sum of alpha have non-zero coefficient. We could call this the support of alpha. Uh, likewise, beta has some finite subset of S, uh, which is its support. That is, this is a set of all the vectors which have non-zero coefficients. Um, now, S prime and S double prime are finite sets. If we take their union, it'll still be a finite set. And so without the loss of generality, we can think of alpha and beta as linear combinations on the set S prime union S double prime, because those elements that were belong to S double prime that don't belong to S prime, we can assume that in alpha, their coefficient is zero. And similar statements can be made for beta as well. So that is, we can, we can grow their supports to support both of these things right here. And so we can assume they have the same set, that is, they're a linear combination over the same finite set. So alpha would look something like this. Beta would look something like this. The vectors are the same in each of these situations. I'm not sure why one started at one and one started at zero. So we'll just put those to be one there. Um, and so when you add these together, you add like terms. The V1s add together, the V2s, the V3s, all the way to the Vn's add together. And you get the following situation there. And so the span will be closed under addition. What about scalar multiplication? Well, that one's even easier, right? If you take R times alpha, then you just times each of the coefficients, which again, not sure where these zeros are coming from. Uh, you just times each of the coefficients by R, and this then gives you an, a linear combination that belongs to S. So we do get that spans R submodules in the space, in the, in the, in the category of vector spaces, these will be subspaces. And in math 2270 linear algebra, you most likely talked about spans of vectors, and these do in fact give you vector subspaces, 
all right? And this is what I said earlier. Alternatively, the span can be defined as the intersection of all submodules that contain the set S, which intersections of submodules can be proven to be submodules. So that gives you necessarily that it's a submodule from a different point of view. Uh, and so then one last thing I want to mention before we close up this lecture 22 is the idea of a spanning set or a generating set. Um, if W is a submodule of V and S is a subset of W, we say that S is a spanning set or sometimes it's called a generating set of W if W is in fact equal to the span of S. Now I want you to be aware that given a submodule, there is not only, there's not one generating set. There can be multiple generating sets. In particular, W is equal to the span of W. Um, that's sort of like a trivial generating set because if you have everything, it generates everything. Voila. Um, clearly, we would want something much smaller. Um, in particular, we'd be interested in sort of like a minimum generating set. Could S be minimum? in some category, in some meaning of that sense. Well, in linear algebra, a minimum generating set does exact, it does exist, and it's what we refer to as a basis for a subspace. In general module theory, we don't necessarily have minimum generating sets, a minimal spanning set, uh, and so a basis is a concept that exists, of course, in linear algebra for vector spaces, but not necessarily in general. But fortunately, vector space is where we want to be, so we do get, uh, we do get bases. Uh, that is a minimal spanning set. You can also define a basis as a maximum uh, linear independent set, but that's a topic we'll review in a later lecture. Uh, but let's end this video with an example. Consider the vector space Q adjoin the square root of two, which when you look at that, we can see that this is a vector space because um, every element of Q adjoin two is a rational number plus a rational number times the square root of two. And so if you take the numbers one and the square root of two, this forms a spanning set for Q adjoin two. In fact, Q adjoin two is written as the span of one and the square root of two. These spanning sets are not necessarily unique, but this is sort of like the standard basis for this field over that field. And this is a concept we'll do many, many times as we proceed forward with our study of rings. Uh, but for now, that ends our lecture 22, reviewing the topics of vector spaces and subspaces, although we broadened the category to modules and submodules. I appreciate you watching. If you learned anything from linear algebra or if you learned anything from about module theory, uh, please like these videos, subscribe to the channel to see more things like this in the future. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below.